What's shaking? Thanks for swinging on by the Crazy Urban Canuck channel, where we like to show you how we do things here in the great white north of Canada. Today we're looking at my HVLP spray gun setup. Hoses, regulators, connectors, uh, air compressor that I'm running. Basically everything that goes from the air compressor all the way out to the business end where we're going to make the money or, or save the money, which is kind of what I'm generally after. So sit tight, enjoy the show, and let's get to learning you some stuff. All right, we're over here at the old Husky Pro. We got a 60 gallon, 3.2 horsepower, and 10.2 CFM and 90 PSI. The uh, guy I bought it from off of Facebook Marketplace put an upgraded pump on it. He did not upgrade the motor, so it's not actually going to put out the 14 and a half CFM that the book says on the new pump. But it works really good for what I'm using it for. It does struggle a little bit to keep up with my DA sander when I've got it wide open and I'm hogging down some body filler. Thankfully I don't do a lot of that, so this thing's mostly running air tools. It's not a commercial quality unit by any stretch of the imagination, but it's great for your home hobbyists like myself. Uh, the guy did a pretty good job installing it, however the uh, guard on the back is a shake, rattle and roll type of unit, so this thing makes uh, quite a racket when she's running. Sounds like it's gonna come right off the moorings and just float away into the ocean or something, I don't know. Whatever analogy you want to splice in there, have at her. So now we're going to head over to the bench and we're going to look at my spray gun setup. It is an HVLP as the name suggests. I'm going to say that acronym about 20 more times at least and you're going to love it. Alrighty, back here at the bench looking at our HVLP gun now. <laughs> There's another one. I'll let you throw your guesses as to how many times I'm going to use that acronym in this video down below in the comments. So here's the HVLP gun sitting in the HVLP, now I'm just doing it for fun, holder or stand that I got from Harbor Freight I think about 15 years ago. This thing's been with me since the beginning. Uh, it wasn't very expensive. It Worth its weight in gold to be honest. I don't know how you would fill one of these guns without one, or a homemade version of it, or something like that, or a better version, you know, if you want to go all out. But for my $50 Canuck Buck HDLP, ding, 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 <laughs> Chinese gun, this thing does just fine. Always take your air hose off in case you trip over it. Man, that would make a mess. I don't even know. Never done it. I'm not going to admit to it anyway. <laughs> so here's, here's the gun. A few knobs and settings and stuff like that. For the purposes of this, let's just open them all the way up. So this is your flow control starting at the end of the gun. Uh, back that all the way out. Uh, up Coming up here the back, this is what will come in the back of your needle. So this will come in, push on a spring, which I just dropped on the floor. So we're going to have to go find that in a little bit. And then you got your needle. Zoom, zoom, that goes in the back of the gun. Essentially pulling, or not pulling, but turning this so that it's all the way out to the point where you can bury the trigger all the way back. I'll sort of show you is that as I screw this in, the trigger's going to start moving forward if I release my lock nut also. <laughs> so you can see the trigger starting to go. And what that's doing is it's limiting the amount that that needle can come back. And as the needle comes back, it comes out of that seat in the front of the cap. And then out comes the money. An automotive paint is expensive. Sorry, I was looking for that spring just to see if it was laying there, but it's not. Uh, we're on to our fan control. This knob here, as you can kind of see by the arced indicator, if you turn it all the way counterclockwise, then you're opening your fan all the way up like this. This is a really technical demonstration of what's happening at the end of this gun, but you get a sort of a, a V-shaped 
So if I was to turn that clockwise, my fan shape would narrow. Okay, so there's the gun, just sort of an overview. Uh, what I really wanted to show you was the unique setup for putting a regulator on, or not having a regulator always on my gun while I'm spraying. So I'm going to set one on there, this one right here, just a brass T with a gauge on the end, an upside down gauge. <laughs> so I'll screw that on the end of there. I'll set my pressure at the main regulator, I'll show you all that in a minute. And then boom, I take it off, squirt the car, I only have to do it once, basically per spray job. I use my little tool that comes with the gun to take the uh, thing off here. I don't put any Teflon tape on it. It doesn't hiss, doesn't leak. Maybe I just got lucky. Here's me. If you try this, if you try this Canuck trick, and I'm gonna put that on. Whoop! <laughs> Almost lost her. Screw her on there. I mean, obviously, because I'm right-handed, I wouldn't want, if I was to leave that on there or using a, a permanent gauge that stayed on the gun, I, I, I'm aware. I don't want it on that side of the gun because it's going to hit my wrist. I put a nippler on the end of that, hog my airline in the end of it, and then I do all the setting over there at the main regulator, which I will show you now. Over here at the regulator now, she's sitting at about 44 PSI. I don't even have the compressor on. I was gone for a few days. I had it turned off. This will work fine for our purposes anyway, because it's already above what we want it to be at, around 30 PSI. Most of the paints that I've you know, been working with, they want to see, it says right on the can, or you can ask the person that sells it, 27 PSI at the cap. I don't have a way... I haven't even Googled it or anything to see if there is a way of measuring the actual pressure at the cap. What I do know is that if I have 32 coming in here at my Franchi Spanish little gauge, then it sprays nicely. So trial and error has told me that it's probably sitting around 27 at the cap because when I do my little test patterns and whatnot on the uh, paper on the wall, it looks great. So 44 in here, I want to get 32 on the gun. Just connect my air hose. Tissing because the little rig I'm using is just temporary. See if I can get this thing to focus on there. Alright, so I'm going to come back here to the regulator on the wall. I'm going to pull this back until I get 30. And I'm actually going to hold the trigger on the gun. So on this spray gun and most others, the first indent, we'll call it, detent actually, hey, there's a technical term. The first detent is air only. No product will be coming out of the tip if the gun is clean and operating properly. So I will hold it to the first detent while setting the air pressure. Cycle it a couple of times, bada bing, bada boom. I'm gonna check it because this gauge is really dirty and it's hard to read. Yeah, see, good thing I did, that's 40. 40 people. Why oh, didn't you say something? Oop, that's not it. All right, now let me check it. 32, or thereabouts, so. That's the setup. I'll just disconnect this, spin my little rig off of here. I'll put my female nippler back onto the gun and then whoop, go spray and save the money. Now I don't have to fight with this bloody regulator on the end of this. It'll just be free and clear for me to do whatever I want with my wrist. Hopefully that helps. So obviously my estimate for how many times I was going to say HVLP was way off. We landed on six.
But hopefully one of you down in the comment boxes got a lot closer than I did. And if you did, give yourself a big old pat on the back. Thanks for watching.